Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry presents Season of Joy, Reflections for the 50 Days of Easter. Today's reflection is by Mark Huddy. Mark serves the Catholic Diocese of Columbus as Director of Catholic Charities and Social Concerns and is a member of the Senior Executive Team. Mark and his wife Beth have four children and four grandchildren. They are members of St. Matthew the Apostle Parish in Gahana, Ohio. Now let's listen to today's scripture, followed by Mark's reflection. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa when In a trance, I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter. Slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then, three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The Word of the Lord. Here we are on day 23 of the Easter season, fully immersed in the Acts of the Apostles. Acts is a wonderful book telling the story of the apostles after the resurrection of Jesus, the spread of the gospel, and the growth of the church all through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can read it as a history, or we can think of it as evidence of the hand of God guiding the church through the obstacles and challenges to the ends of the earth. Sometimes we forget that we, as baptized believers, are the church, and that those miracles are still happening today. In fact, there's an organization called Acts 29, in Roman numerals, 
working to energize the church to live out the next chapter of Acts in our day, following our Lord's mandate to carry the gospel message to the ends of the earth. The first reading for today is a beautiful guide for us in two ways. First, in this time of Easter joy, we are enthusiastic about sharing the message of God's great love through our words and our deeds. But our humanity sometimes clouds our best efforts. We have a human tendency to categorize things, and even people, into groups, and based upon our own experiences and understanding, we also tend to place value judgments on those groups. This is what happened to Peter when he goes to Jerusalem after baptizing a Roman centurion named Cornelius and his family in Caesarea, staying with them and eating with them. The circumcised believers in Jerusalem confront Peter about this. Peter had violated the legal barriers between Jew and Gentile. It was an honest question based upon their lack of understanding and their not knowing at that moment the specifics of the divine direction Peter had received in Joppa. We are prone to making similar mistakes. We can be tempted to limit our evangelizing outreach in word and charity to the deserving or to those who don't cross certain boundaries that we have established. Thus we rob our actions of their power as a sign of the incredible, gratuitous love of God for us sinners. We want to protect ourselves, or the church, or God, from being taken advantage of by the unscrupulous. But maybe it is in precisely our willingness to take that risk that the unscrupulous are transformed by the human echo of divine love. Maybe, by allowing God's love to flow freely through us, we are transformed as well. Some may object that Peter was given divine direction and that we have not had such visions. We may not have visions, but we do have God's word. Love one another as I have loved you. Or, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Or, which one was neighbor to the man beaten by the side of the road? The one who treated him with compassion. Go and do likewise. St. Vincent de Paul once told one of the Daughters of Charity that it is only for your love, your love alone, that the poor will forgive you for giving them bread. The good news is that Jesus came to save us all. He willingly laid down his life and rose again in order to give us eternal life. That is the Easter message we are called to share. Everything we have from God is an unmerited gift. We are meant to be a channel of his love, not a closed and stagnant cistern. Pope Benedict XVI, speaking of love of neighbor, reminds us in his encyclical God is Love of this fact. Seeing with the eyes of Christ, I can give to others much more than their outward necessities. I can give them the look of love which they crave. The second lesson from our first reading is simple. By not trying to limit God's action, we can again see the miracles of conversion, of transformation, so prevalent in Acts. And we can be part of that next chapter of Acts, written about God's action, brought about by the faith and love of his disciples in our day. We hope you've enjoyed today's Season of Joy Reflection. Tune in tomorrow for the next edition in our Easter series. And if you haven't already joined our email list, visit htoh.us to sign up and receive more inspirational content delivered right to your inbox. May God bless your heart and the hearts of all your loved ones.